Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an instructive game to share with you from round 8, Norway Chess 2024. This is the Armageddon game between Magnus Carlsen on the white end and Pragnananda. Time controls 10 minutes for Carlsen, 7 for Prag. Prag has draw odds, and a 1 second increment kicks in at move 41. Now the main focus in this one, end game phase, an instructive bishop for knight end game. The early stage, pretty tame, but let's still focus on some details here, the tension in particular. When is it released? Let's find out. Is now a good time for black to take on c4? No. Nope. In this game, it's castles. If black takes on c4 here, white will almost certainly recapture with the piece that is not yet playing. Bishop gets to c4 in one move. All right, in this game, it's castles. Black, in a way, waits for Carlson to expend a move with this guy before releasing the tension. Now, if white wants to recapture with the bishop, fine. It took you two moves to get there. In this case, Carlson says I'd prefer to take with the queen. From c4, she fights for that c5 square. Carlson knows Prag wants to play the c5 pawn break, uh, trying to make that difficult to get in. How do we know black wants to play c5? This is a half-open c file for white. And this guy here is a bit on the backward side, which means it's a natural target for white's major pieces. So it makes sense to try and get rid of this liability makes sense to try and exchange this pawn for one of white's pawns and in this case white's most valuable pawn d4 more prep work is required before black can successfully play this move however in the game black continues with a6 if black plays c5 here this would mean black is okay taking on isolated queenside pawns not a good approach by black. Okay. From here, it's a6. No knight jumps. Castles. We're inching closer. c5. Are we ready to go yet? Let's see. Carlson's trying to discourage c5, playing opposite the queen. Prague now plays b5. This is an important moment. I feel this is a position uh, you could easily go wrong playing as black. It's very easy to look at this one and say, you know what, I have enough support for c5. Let me just go ahead and play it right now. What would be the issue playing c5 here? Let's see. White can take on c5. No problem. No rook takes queen. Also no problem with a fractured queen side structure. These guys are cool. What is the problem, however? This last recapture has given white an important square, has given up control over e5. Knight e5 is an excellent move. Now let's just stare at this position for a bit. What is happening? This knight from e5 eyes the most sensitive square in black's camp. From c6, it controls d8. What might this mean? It might mean black finds it difficult to now contest the open d file. It might mean that there's a timely jump to e7 with check. Are we done yet? There's a couple more moves available to white now that the knight is on e5. Pawn moves on the king side. g4, bothering the bishop, getting a flight square in the process maybe a follow-up g5, or even a construction with pawns on f3 and e4, which would squash black's light square bishop and king knight. They would be ineffective if that structure is on board. We're seeing a big domino effect if a white knight is allowed to this e5 square. Prague plays b5 here, kicks the queen away from controlling c5, and only now 
plays c5. How is this different? Well, after takes, takes, no follow-up knight e5 move here. There is a square, though, for the knight. After this capture, d4 is now available. Gets there with tempo. Bishop g6. And now that the knight is on d4, a new move is available for the light square bishop. We're seeing white now coordinate on that sensitive c6 square and target the rook in the process play continues here with rook a7 the computer move here a slick one computer says play bishop h5 pinning the bishop to the rook that's a really neat move preparing to meet bishop takes rook bishop takes rook calls this one even steven some other continuation after bishop to h5. If you take the bishop, the queen is ready to recapture out of any potential rook attack on the open file around an even position here as well. Okay, no bishop h5 here. Instead, rook a7. Follow up rook a to c1. Queen is off of the c file. And we continue with knight to c6. So the rook is hit. Where do you go with the rook? You better not go anywhere. <laughs> uh, the best move is knight to e5, the move played in the game. If the rook goes to, let's say, c7, here's how we could see that e7 square uh, be effective. White has knight takes b5 here. You recapture with the knight. There we go. Get a tactic on e7. The rook falls next. Prague's move here, knight e5, the best. This means the rook, uh, well, the rook on a7 is poison in this case. Knight takes knight is played in this game. If you take the rook, black would be winning. Knight takes bishop, taking advantage of the pin. Follow up knight g4, look at these monsters. White doesn't have a single piece defending the king side here. Threatening mate, knight takes f2, that would hurt. Also, this guy's poison, this would still be mate. And not only is there a threat on f2, but also h2 in this case. Okay, Carlson continues in the best way. He takes the knight, queen takes, and now tries to break down the queen side structure, immediately targeting the rook on a7 rather than recapturing right away. Still remains around an even position. Flight square for black. Bishop to e2. There's a big difference, I'd say, between these two guys. Kind of a staring off into space. Bishop for black. White's bishop was effective on the main diagonal, and now it's pinpointing uh, the weak a6 pawn. Follow up knight d5. Targets the queen. She remains. Uh, she goes to d4, central post. A5. Don't have to babysit the A pawn anymore. Follow up knight C5. Queen B6. Bishop F3. So soon what's going to happen now after bishop F3, there's going to be a structural change. Black's soon going to have an isolated D pawn, and you really cannot avoid this uh, structural change. We're ready to have bishop takes knight, pawn takes, and there you go. Isolated d pawn. If black tries to prevent an isolated d pawn position, there's going to be a problem. So, for instance, uh, if rook d8 is played here, in the game it's rook b8. If rook d8, you're in a self pin, and it's exploited right away with e4. White wins a piece. If instead the knight moves, let's say a forward move, b4, it's a hole. The queen would be unprotected, and white would have a boomerang tactic. That's how I like to describe it, at least. Knight takes e6 would be available. White is ready to meet queen takes queen with the knight circling back on the recapture, and in the end, white is up a pawn. What other option would there be here for black? 
You take the knight with the pawn, you simply lose a queen. And if you play queen takes knight, you would lose the rook. So, moving the knight, trying to defend the knight, no good. You have to simply take on now this isolated pawn. Follow up, b3, got that supported. It's not the ideal post for the knight. It would prefer really to be on d4, where it's securely defended by a pawn, a, con a much more convenient defender. Rook c7 here. Pop quiz, how would you continue? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, Carlson plays the best move. It's one I highlighted just moments ago, but in this case, it's not capturing a pawn. Knight e6. The knight simply just wants to arrive on d4 after queen takes queen. This is how it plays out in the game. What other options are there for black? If you play queen takes knight, you're going to lose a rook. If you instead take with the pawn, there would follow queen takes queen, and then rook takes rook. Any other continuation? If you play rook takes rook, you get mated. <laughs> Don't forget about that coordination on g7. So all of these details have been worked out. He crunched the numbers on knight to e6. The very best move. In the end, it is queen takes queen, knight takes queen. In the computer's eyes, it remains around uh, even. But uh, let's see how Carlson tries to uh, squeeze blood from a stone. Uh, how to keep winning chances available. Rook on b to c8 follows. Rook a1, targeting the pawn. Bishop c2, rook c1. And we have a pair of rooks exchanged here. A computer actually prefers to play this one, this endgame here, with um, both rooks on board. It's a fan of playing rook to e1, safeguarding the king, and then looking forward to putting uh, both rooks on that a5 pawn. A rook post on a3 also is a bit sneaky, threatening a possible b4, and bishop would be hit. So it wants to play with two rooks. Carlson decides to decides that it's okay to exchange a pair of rooks. This guy is poison. Carlson has to sort out the back rank mate idea, so f3 it is. Uh, some control over a light square. He's not giving up a square to a bishop. He's carving out a square for the king. It's now ready to improve towards the center. Uh, now black does have to defend this pawn. Rook c5, rook a7. c5 is best. If you go to a7, you're asking for trouble. The pawn is in a pin. Rook a3, for instance, with b4, or maybe even rook a4 with b4 are ideas. Best to defend along the rank. Much more active post. Active defense on c5. Improve the king at this stage. King to e1. I was a little bit uh, curious about this moment here. Uh, after h5 is in, this is the first move that crosses my mind at least to go ahead and fix a pawn on a light square. Why doesn't Carlson play h5? Let me at least assign some reason. I believe if h4, this becomes an idea now. Uh, f6, g5, and we're trading... Um, Pawns. And I think in general, the more pawn trades, the better uh, for black here. Trying to hang on to a draw. Okay, no h4 in this case. Continues improving the king. Bishop f5. And pop quiz, how would you continue here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, in this game, Carlson goes with rook c1. Uh, this may be tempting, taking the bishop. I mean, in the end, look at this. We got isolated pawns everywhere for black. But uh, this is still considered a draw. Even if black loses a pawn, the chances to hold a draw are very high for black. Let's say mm, the queenside pawns were all off the board. King here, pawn here, defends everything. 
and yeah, not so easily broken down. So the best try, the best way to uh, try and score the win here as white is to keep an imbalance. Try and play the knight versus bishop ending. So it's a rook exchange in this case. Now this guy better move. In the game it's bishop d7. If you simply try and improve the king here, now white can swipe the bishop and quickly track down this pawn. Uh, you'll probably want to flick in some move like f4, stopping any uh, ideas of f4 and d4 past pawn. Yeah, this guy is going to be uh, tracked very soon. Black's a pawn in this king and pawn ending. So the bishop is preserved, goes to d7, improving the king. Um, it doesn't really matter in this case, but I like the, uh, <laughs> you know, these little details, this king to b2 move. It's still eyeing up a possible path on a3 to maybe target the pawn, or c3. It's much more flexible on b2 than any other square. All right, in the end, it drifts towards the center. The optimal piece for this d4 square is the king. So the knight gets out of the way, and white is there just in the nick of time on d4. Why is it better for white to occupy d4 with the king instead of the knight? Well, in this case, the king does a good job of offsetting the black king. Doesn't allow it to easily advance. Maintains pressure against this pawn. Gives black a responsibility now to defend d5. We continue here with a4. We get an exchange of the a, b pawns. In general, playing with the bishop, uh, you'd normally want to keep pawns on both sides of the board. You know, maybe in this case, you know, black may try to target the b-pawn, but when you look at it a bit closer, how exactly would the bishop target the b-pawn? With this pawn on d5, it really interferes with the bishop. You can forget about this diagonal here, trying to get at the pawn from a different angle. Let's say heading to c2. Yeah, you're going to have a tough time, actually. King c3, bishop here. Normally, it's these guys, these positions switched where uh, the bishop dominates the knight. In this case, the knight, in connection with the f3 and b3 pawns, uh, dominates the bishop. White is winning in this case. Next up, king d2, king takes bishop. a4 could be met with b4. You run with the pawn, you're getting hit with a fork. Okay. At the end of the day, Prague says, let me just go ahead and exchange these queenside pawns, and uh, I'm going to focus just on the king side and center pawns at this stage. Knight f4. Got to defend the d5 pawn. Now we have h4. Bishop to a2. Black really doesn't have many moves here. Um, where do you go? If you move the king, you give up a big square, e5. Where do you go with the bishop? In trying to defend the pawn, it's best to defend from afar. If you instead go to c4 here, looking at maybe targeting uh, these g and f pawns, there's a restriction now on this pawn. White would be able to play e4. Pawn takes, you lose the bishop. So white would be winning a pawn shortly if the bishop is on c4. So in this game, it is bishop a2. And now the follow-up g4. Prague really doesn't have a whole lot of time uh, at this point. Uh, once we were at around move 41, it was a uh, clock difference. Carlson had about two minutes. Prague had a minute. So even less time at this stage. The follow-up is h takes g. Now, if there was more time, a move to certainly consider here as black would be g5, and this forces through a past h-pawn. So if you play knight takes h5 here, or even h takes g5, black can play h4. There's a really, there's really a lot you would have to calculate before going for this. Not a lot of time on the clock for it, I guess. No g5, but it's, 
in short, something to certainly consider. Just know that, you know, creating this little cube of pawns will, one way or another, have a passed H pawn now for black, either a capture or a push. Okay, in this game, it's the simple capture on G4. F takes G4, and now we have this candidate passed pawn. H5, H6, just going right down for a promotion. What do you do about that? Eventually, one of these two is going to have to stop the H pawn, so Prague goes with the king. I mean, if you just keep making bishop moves, white's making progress. You have to go at some point. He goes with the king, gives up the D pawn. This is still considered an even position. Follow up king to e6. You can't go into the king and pawn ending. White has the extra pawn. This is winning for white. King e6 it is. Knight is supported. Bishop b3. Instead of this bishop move, if black tries to liquidate, it's an important continuation. If f5 here, it's not working because white would have e takes f5, pawn takes f5, and a timely check with the knight followed up with g5. Two connected pass pawns and an easily blockaded pawn. So, no time for f5, not working out. Bishop b3 it is, knight check, g5 check, king goes to g7. Now, again, Prague doesn't have a whole lot of time. It is better to stay a bit more central. The black king at least is in a spot to shoulder off the white king from making inroads. We're going to see Carlson make uh, excellent progress with his king very soon. He continues with king e5. Still considered a draw position. Bishop c2 is excellent, maintaining pressure on the pawn. Knight d5. And the follow-up here is bishop to d3. This is the last... Uh, this is the losing move now. What must be tried here is king to f8. The king can't improve here. Going forward, drops the pawn. And what else are you supposed to do? You're running in reverse, you're not making progress, and if you move the knight anywhere, the king has access to e7. Not allowing the king to enter so easily. But we still have in this position... This idea to maintain the pressure on e4. I believe just the quick train of thought, you know, with this time control, you're just playing uh, with intuition. I believe the, uh, the train of thought is, let me just put the king in this little hut on g7. Let's see if you can break it down. It seems like uh, you could just watch over this base point. No problems for black. Well, there is, in fact, a problem. So let's see this uh, smooth technique now by Carlson. It is first knight f6, defending e4. Now the king is free to enter. King f8, king d6. The king is stuck. You can't get out now. These are the only squares for the black king in this case. f8, g7, h8. You don't have any pawn moves either. Black is only playing essentially with this bishop and the king stuck in the corner. Bishop b2, or excuse me, bishop b1, king d7. King goes all the way to d8. And now the knight flushes the king to g7. And the king gets to make progress now on e7. No bishop takes knight is going to save black here. In the game we have bishop to b1. If black instead captures the knight, this would be a winning position. Here's how you could win it. Exchange off that pawn, and soon enough you're going to be winning the G pawn. Okay, in this game, bishop b1. And now, a knight maneuver. Knight c5. And then knight b7. This is a way forward as well. There's not only one winning path for white. You could break down the structure with e6 here, and that would still be winning. There's a little finesse involved with that continuation, but the very best sequence, really instructive one, 
Uh, I thought so, at least. Here it is. Knight b7, knight d6. All black can do is shuffle at this stage. And pop quiz, how would you continue here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay. If you did spend some time on this one, I imagine many of you were considering a check. How's this one, though? You can actually take on f7. This is beautiful. Bishop takes knight and now e6. Ouch. See what just happened there? This bishop. Is it really a bishop? <laughs> this pawn. This pawn is killing it. These guys here. Uh, not a, not a whole lot of squares to choose from. After king to d7 now, Prague resigns. There's no stopping uh, this push, no successful stop of the e pawn. If you try to approach here with the king, you run into a check and you get the queen. What other option does black have? You go here? <laughs> you, you run away from the pawn? What it's coming down to is that eventually you're going to have to give up the bishop for the pawn. And again, the white king will eventually be able to track down the g-pawn. And of course, this is winning. But after king d7 in this one, we go no further. Prag resigns. So what do you think of this one? Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.